Welcome to the first episode of Flix Watcher podcast. I'm Helen. And I'm Kobe. Today we are joined by Felix and Tom from the comedy serial podcast, Wooden Overcoats, where we will be discussing and dissecting the Aardman animation Pirates. An adventure with misfits. Or scientists, whichever version you end up watching. Join us on Twitter at FlixWatcherPod. Come and visit us on our website, flixwatcher.tv, and go to iTunes. Subscribe to us, review, and share with your friends, because sharing is caring. And we hope you enjoy the show. All films were available on Netflix at a time recording. There will be spoilers and bad language. You have been warned. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Flix Watcher Podcast. And today we are joined by Felix and Tom. Do you want to say hello and uh, introduce yourselves and tell us uh, what podcasting things you do? Hello, I'm Tom. Hello, I'm Felix. And together we work on Wooden Overcoats, which is a sitcom released as a podcast. And we do nothing else together. That's it. <laughs> Like you just disowned him right here, right now. I think, uh, well, how was it you described the podcast to me? So I described it as archers with, it's like an archers six feet under Larry David mashup. With There's nothing of that podcast listeners like more than an archers <laughs> reference. Yep. And Larry David as well. And Larry David. Uh, so Last of the Summer Wine, there's lots of that in there too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a recommendation, but I always think of it. It's, we get, what do we get? We get... Compared to Goon Show. Cabin Pressure. Cabin Pressure, because yeah, yeah. we're on the radio. Because we're a radio sitcom. Yeah. There's not many of them. But we're not on the radio. Yeah, um, I don't know. We're on some radio. We're on some like non-for-profit radios in America. Oh, nice. Yeah, every now and then. Like, we've had two, I think, now email us. <laughs> so <laughs> truckers, truckers listen to us and, and podcast so fans. Can we broadcast your thing? We go, yeah, do you have any money? And I they go, like, no. no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I sure. just thought, I love the idea of it as a long-haul trucker tuning his AM radio and then a station coming in just with us having a little back and forth sort of <laughs> comedy scene and then sort of immediately sort of staticking out as he leaves the county like before he can get through the scene because <laughs> we're long form narrative so <laughs> it doesn't suit that at all was that a story narrated by a mouse what yeah, yeah exactly like, what, where, huh? yeah. what so we're here to talk about pirates an adventure with scientists or an adventure with misfits depending on where you are in the band world of band, band of misfits band of misfits <laughs> Which makes no sense. No. But, Tom, you chose this. Can you give us a, a synopsis and why did you choose it? It's a, a comedy. It's an Arban Animations comedy, which means it looks a lot like Wallace and Gromit. And also it's heavy on the visual gags and the word gags. So it's all about the pirate captain, whose name is the pirate captain, and his crew who are, well, they travel, we assume, the Caribbean <laughs> and they have various sort of uh, adventures, pillaging and having sword fights Having Ham Night. Ham Night's very ham important. Night. Ham Night is very important in the film. It's very funny. It is very funny. We don't get to the review yet. We've got to oh, size it. Sorry. First. And so, anyway. Pirate... Four out of five. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> the pirates. Hold for spoilers. Spoilers. Five out of five. Spoiler Stop alert. it. The, oh, we're in the ending now. Stop listening. The, <laughs> the, the pirate crew are pretty contented, but the pirate captain himself is obsessed with winning the Pirate of the Year Award, yeah. which his great rivals, uh, of which there are several, have always taken ahead of him. So, in amidst his great defeats at uh, his attempts to become the Pirate of the Year, he ends up on a tropical island and picking up the young Charles Darwin, who then uh, escorts them back to London once he sees that among their crew is a still-alive dodo, which had already died out. So, uh, similarly to the Pirate Captain, Darwin is desperate to become the Scientist of the Year. He takes the dodo and the crew back to London, and uh, adventures continue thereforth. I think that's a fantastic synopsis. Yeah, yeah, just about. Spawn. I yeah. sort of mentioned the, the voices. Obviously, the pirate captain is Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, yeah. unrecognizable, fantastic. Yeah, mm. and there's um, quite a lot of other British talent. Martin Freeman's in yep. there. Yep. David Tennant. And, Ashley uh, Jensen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sel- Selma Hayek's Lenny, in there as Lenny well. Lenny Henry. Yes, he's yeah. always fantastic. Lenny Henry, isn't it? Yeah. I always loved Lenny Henry turning up in anything. Brian Blessed. Yeah, yeah Brian of course. Blessed. Brian Blessed. Like pirate King. There he yeah. is. Yeah. Right there. Oh yes, yes, Brian Blessed, Pirate King, nailed on casting. I realise we're on a podcast. I'm pointing to an image <laughs> of him. <laughs> yeah, you're pointing to a plasticine image. Oh, of God. Him. Po- it's a screen projecting an image of a plasticine figure. <laughs> so we're in Brian London Blessing. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Yes. So what do we make of this film, guys? I loved it. I'm, it's, I, really, I also loved Curse of the Weir Rabbit, the Wallace and Gromit feature. And I just think it's such a kind of 
Carry on esque. I mean, if you want to know what what's wooden overcoats like, it's a lot like a version of this that you can't see the pictures of. <laughs> like it's it's quite <laughs> urban animations, and it is quite sort of. It's so silly. It's silly. So yeah. Beano town. Yes. Calamity James kind of gags. It is. And they come so regularly and Thick so and fast. fast, and they're kind of hidden everywhere. It's street corner signs, kind of tavern sign names. Yeah. So many sight gags and little moments and and callbacks. Like, some really lovely moments of callback. With, you, know, you got the hand light. You got the vinegar the and dressed as girl guides. Yeah, and the vinegar and the and the, and the baking soda yes. coming out a couple of times. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's just, it, and it, all those things are quite subtly set up, and they're not really telegraphed in that very nice sort of film storytelling way, where you go. There's so many images and fun ideas that are very easy to latch onto quickly being thrown at you that when some are brought back, it's a genuine surprise. Mm. So like when when the sort of pivotal moment of foiling the evil plot is something you've already seen, you go, oh, that was perfectly set up, but I didn't see it didn't coming because there was so much different sort of a richness in the rules yeah. of this world, this sort of cartoon world. Do you know what I, I love is this character here that I'm pointing out to the pirates. <laughs> so for those, for those people oh, who yes, are listening, yes, which, that is, one, yeah. which is everyone outside of us four here... So, it's the uh, surprisingly curvaceous pirates. Yeah, the pirate who is clearly a woman dressed as a man, <laughs> yeah. which is never addressed. No, no, that's never resolved. She's never found out. It's just that pirate's character. <laughs> yeah, and they draw even while they're dressing as girl guides in disguise. That's never addressed either. No. And her fake beard stays on. <laughs> <laughs> who plays the Ashley Jensen? I think. Ah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. blimey. I, th- I thought. Yeah, it was great. I thought. I- this is the second time I saw it. The first time was in the cinema when it first came out, and I—I oh. I think this is one one of the one of the scores where the repeat viewing score is going to be very high because there's so much stuff going on in here that I missed, clearly missed the first time. Even though the first time I saw it was in the cinema, there were so many things going on in the background. Like I said, the street signs—I can't remember any of them now because there's too many things that kind of just nudged itself out of my brain as, as soon as the next kind of mm-hmm. gag came along. Strangely, when this came out, I've just you saying that now makes me remember that a beef that I'm going to address now on air, which is at the time I was working on a, uh, as a writer on a cartoon show at the time this came out, and someone I won't say who who was working on the program, who I think was the only person in the office who'd seen it, came in and said, oh, "I saw that uh, pirates movie, the Arben movie last night. I went, is it any good?" And they went, "Nah." And now I think they must have been a complete fool, <laughs> and that's why I didn't go and see it at the time. But now... So this is the first time you've seen it? Yeah, first time I saw it. It, it, it was absolutely wonderful. It's just yeah. so up my street. Helen, how did you feel? Well, I did see this at the cinema. And when obviously it was down to suggest it, I sort of went, oh, I've seen that. I, I can't really remember much about it. And <laughs> I thought I thought it was all right. You fool. <laughs> well, this this is it. See, I, you know, Peter Lord was director of this. Also Chicken Run and obviously some of the Wallace and Gromit stuff. I mean, it's got everything in it that I should like. And... Some of the jokes, I think, are very, very good. But I think it's just because it's it's kind of pirates and they're not really as interesting as talking chickens or they're not really <laughs> yeah. as kind of fun as Wallace and Gromit. I don't, it's there's got just, a way sort of looser premise, I guess, because yeah, pirates is just I mean, pirates. Have you I been can jaded kind of, because of I Johnny can, Depp? No, I mean, I can, I can see exactly why you all loved it and think it's brilliant and... I was quite surprised when it came out that it wasn't as popular as it probably should have been. For some reason, it just didn't quite have the chicken run power mm, or yeah. it didn't quite have, you know, the, the Wallace and Gromit behind it. I mean, you know, it's it looks fantastic. The attention to detail is superb and the characters are just completely bizarre and they maintain <laughs> their, you know, their quirks and everything all the way through. So everything in it is saying you should like this film, but it just... Never really, quite no, tweaked. I didn't really connect with it, and mm. which is a bit mm. of shame. There was like one or two moments I, you know, laughed out loud, but yeah, I just didn't. I don't know. I just kind of felt you coasted through, yeah, yeah, which is a shame because obviously you all really, really enjoyed it. Curse but you! I know. I don't know. I, th- I don't know if it's the pirates. I'm not really sure. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you know, the cast. The, you know, the voices are great. The voices are really matched with the characters, mm. and it's kind of that little balance of. Oh yeah, it is that you know actor, and, and they Martin kind of Martin Freeman looks like his, his yeah, character. and it, it it kind of brings that sort of r- real life element to it, which is obviously a puppet, which you know sometimes that doesn't really happen with these kind of animated film, films. They don't really bring any character to what they're voicing, mm. you know. So it's really well directed. It looks great, you know. There's kind of a lot of fun elements, but just 
something in there it just didn't really I just don't have the love for it that mm. I'm feeling I'm being yeah. well, like I, suffocated and it might be circumstance totally as well yeah. you know because we um, Felix recently moved to Paris temporarily we hope but maybe not and um, we watched this first on a the weekend <laughs> when we and one of the producers of Wooden Overcoats Andy Goddard went to Felix's parents house to uh, drop off some of his things and mm. it was just the most perfect evening of a takeaway curry some lovely lads having a sit down in the living room three and popping Netflix lads. on three lovely lads one of them <laughs> not here dead now of course and he's not and just watching <laughs> may he rest fu- in my dear stop it <laughs> watching <laughs> A lovely, silly film about pirates. and just you, Andy. Yes. Well, whether or not I was moved to my very core by the story, I couldn't tell you. But what I just thought was, it was one of those films that seemed to always be a step ahead of me in terms of its ideas. You yeah. Know? So it's, it's one of those comedies where you're never bored. Like You're never thinking, yeah, you've done that joke. Or like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Like, you know, I get what that character's thing is. Or I get what that, you know, or you see anything coming. It just keeps sort of... It's all, it's all set up. You know, there's a journey through it. It gets very, very silly by, yeah. by the end. But it is, I guess, consistently entertaining. Uh, but at, at the same time, I suppose it doesn't quite have the emotional core of something like Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. I think I saw the first time I saw it, I don't think I was taken by it so much. I think I just, I love Wallace and Gromit. I think they're absolutely mm. outstanding. The best things on TV whenever it's on. I'm looking forward to being on this Christmas. Is there um, a new one? Well, I don't know. No, just generally. Oh, it'll be on. It yeah, will, yeah, yeah, it yeah, will yeah. be on. At some point, and Feathers McGraw will have me in stitches. Oh, yeah. see but when mm. I saw, I think I, I think I just missed a lot of stuff that was going on in the cinema when it was going on. I was trying to concentrate, concentrate on the story. There's nothing really to concentrate on. Mm. But there's so many. There are so many nice touches, like when they dress up as scientists. No, it's the pirates. Look, we're still the same guys. And lifts got lifts her glasses up, calls <laughs> calls back to the girl guides, Queen Victoria going crazy with the with the two samurai swords. Mm. Oh, that Charles is... Darwin dressed as a you know, chick feathered and tarred mm-hmm. and stuff like that. There's so many. Not, I mean, they're the obvious gags. Yeah, and there's, they're just sustained like little things. And... I think there's one major thing that for me really differentiates it from the other Ardman animations, which is the character, of the pirate captain. Mm-hmm. While every hero in Ardman has flaws, he's much more flawed in that True. he's very vain. Uh, it's his vanity that kind of pushes the whole thing and that's never really resolved not fully so he's a bit of an anti-hero thrown into this but also there's no simple moral it's not like hey embrace your friends and be grateful for what you have and you'll Mm -hmm. stop being a vain jerk but it's more like just like if there is a moral it's just a bit like give it a rest now again (laughs) you insufferable man but yeah it's but it is it's nice to have a character who's flawed and his flaws are kind of that what keeps them on that knife edge of just getting by. I and suppose. it pushes the action. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. It, 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 it clearly, well, because the, the book is a series and there's the pirates in an adventure with communists and stuff, which would have been great to see. <laughs> I would have liked that to come out now in this political climate now, a kid's film promoting communism. That'd be fun. Anyway, but the, um, so you feel like they were setting up for a franchise, but for whatever reason, maybe it was that the pirates thing had sort of died a death already after all, like the 11 millionth disappointing Pirates of the Caribbean film or or what, but it, it just didn't quite take off like I think everyone was hoping. Mm. But it would have been nice to see more adventures, I think. I would have been up for that. What are your thoughts, Felix? I, I agree. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, I, it translates very well to a TV series. Like It's something that could be done in half-hour segments. Yeah. If you wanted to go down that route and say Pirates with Adventure with Communists is considered too difficult to push to other markets... There's so many other silly things that you can do with it. Can I recommend another thing, by the way, while we're on um, Ardman? Yeah, sure. There's a bunch of shorts. I remember my my godfather had a VHS tape of Ardman's like classic shorts, and I thought, oh, great, like Wallace and Gromit. These weren't them. These were like the art, the film festival, you know, Palm Door winning serious shorts. You know, some of them comedy, a lot of them just documentary. Oh my god! And yeah, like co- uh, talking uh, conversation pieces. I think they were called some of them which are just someone put a mic in a, a newspaper office and recorded the dialogue. Mm. And then later on, the animators listen back and animate a newspaper office scene mm. verbatim. And the dialogue I've, I've is seen there. those. Yeah, they, did them oh. for the, um, they did them for the British gas adverts as well. I mean, the creature comforts, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Oh, they, oh no, no, no. Well, they, these were just, um, these were earlier. These were just, they, they did the same thing with them. They used yeah. in real verbatim interviews. But the previous series they'd done was, I think, for a Channel 4 season of things. I forget what the season was. But anyway, so one of them that isn't isn't a verbatim piece. It's voiced over by Arthur Smith, 
And um, mm -hmm. it's called, I was thinking about it recently because I saw the first episode of the new, speaking of Netflix, the new Black Mirror, mm -hmm. and I hated it. Really? The subsequent episodes are really good. The first one is Dross. And it reminded, one thing that reminded me of was this thing, Ident, which is a five minute film, which I just felt did, like 30 years ago, did all the ideas that were in that sort of Instagram focus. No, Nosedive was the first one. That's the one, yeah. And I, I hated it so much. And I, I, I remember thinking, it's like that, like the sort of general social allegory is exactly the same as this film, which is a very simple social allegory set in a maze. And if you just search Ardman Ident, then you'll find it and it's well worth watching. But anyway, that's the extreme opposite end of stop motion <laughs> yeah. to the pirates. Well, it's, oh, it's always great. Good. Oh, it's always good to get new recommendations. Mm. I don't know what I was going to say. Sorry, <laughs> I totally steamrolled that. I was going to bring it back to the, the you know, the soundtrack's very fun. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. Modern soundtrack, particularly like the uh, injection of uh, I'm Not Crying, yeah. which... Uh, is a high point of anything that's that you use in so I thought that was an odd It's choice. strange, isn't it? Yeah. Because I remember I was I think I was asking somebody recently, what was that in that wasn't Fly to the Concords? And I couldn't think. And then I, I remembered it's this. It's this. Yeah. Okay. I mean it's I it's a hilarious song and it's brilliant. I, I find it very odd choosing yeah, you know, a, a comedy pretty song recent like comedy song to underline in that way. It's choosing someone else's comedy for your own jokes. It is a bit like having do you know, they, they do this sometimes in films and, and, and com cartoons and computer games and things where they get an actual comedian to do their actual set yeah. in a scene set in a comedy club or, or something. Or Ricky Gervais did that in Grand Theft Auto. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Oof, was a pity. Yeah, it's weird. And Frankie Boyle, I think, as well. Frankie Boyle's in Grand Theft Auto. He's been Auto. digitized. He's in Grand Theft Auto V. Terrible. Oh, my God. It's very strange. It's a terrible idea. But, like, but it feels a bit like that in a strange way. It's like cutting away to a comedy club and then having an actual comedian do their thing. But it's... But it's a soundtrack. Oh, it was a nice moment. It worked mm. well in context. But having known Flight of the Concords first, I went, why is this here? Yeah, and then you kind of check IMDb and think, like, is Jermaine Clements one of the voices? Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. Is the connection there? Is yeah. this why? Maybe they assume that the audiences will be different. Maybe they assume yeah. that our major audience is going to be eight years old. So this is not a conflict. I don't know. It, it's, mm. it's, it, it's struck a jarring note in a film that I enjoyed very, very much. And it wasn't a bad choice beyond the fact that we knew it, beyond the fact that it has its own cultural connotations and it, it brings back a, a whole load of comedy that's already extant. So mm. it, take, it takes you too far out of the film a so little. much, yeah. It suited, I, I mean, it suited the mood. It was, yeah. it, for me, it was just a moment of like, strange they've done that. And then it sort of did suit the moment, but it might as well have been a pop song by anybody, really. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But would, I mean, those four sets around, have you seen Flight of the Concord, Helen? Of course. Sorry, I, sorry to. I, okay, yeah, no, we, are, we, yeah. we haven't discussed this, but <laughs> the disgust on your face. <laughs> How dare you? There is a there's a huge swathe of people around the world who haven't seen Flight of the Concords, and for us who have seen it, yeah. that when that when when that song comes up, I just see uh, Jermaine's face and the fake tears, and yeah, yeah. so it does it does take me out of the film in that same way. But any time that song comes on, I'm smiling, but it yeah, does yeah. take you out the the smiling from this film. I think so. I, I see what you're saying, Felix, with that. But you know, do you know what though? Like it, it happens in other films. I mean, Randy Newman isn't a comedy songwriter, no. but he writes funny songs. His songs have a sense of humour to them. So when they play Toy Story. "I Love LA," well, yeah, yeah. Well, I was more thinking "I Love LA" and "Naked Gun," the first one, in the baseball <laughs> scene, where you've got a sort of a vaguely amusing kind of Randy Newman lyrics set behind a lot of visual gags. It's the same basic premise. And as I remember, if I remember correctly, with "I'm Not Crying," it is backing up some sort of fairly amusing sort of vignettes of sadness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same principle, really. I mean, there's also, also songs like oh, Supergrass is on there. Yeah. Kind yep. of properly old school Temple Tudor sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> stuff's on there. It's kind it's... of stuff that your dad would like. Yeah. yeah. Which oh. is sort of the vibe you get from the Pirate Captain as well. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Because we're, we're going to make a... We are, sorry. When this goes live, we'll have a Spotify playlist and I think... There'll be a playlist. I think a few of the songs from there will register. Oh, okay. oh, nice. And so I'm... I think maybe I was just thinking, yeah, we'll get to put some Flight of the Concords on there. Yeah. They sure. haven't made a film yet that's not on Netflix, so we can, so at least we can put some yes, Flight of the Concords on there. Definitely. I think it's a great I mean, I really like that song. Yeah. And it's a great song. Yeah, I, I guess it, it kind of woke me up a little bit. I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot this song was in it. And then and I sort of went, But why is this song in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not oh, I got really confused. It's getting in your head. Yeah. It's making you think. It's like why? So do you think if you hadn't if if this was the first Ardman film you'd seen, would you I'm talking to Helen here for the for the dear listeners. Would you have seen upon this was more favourable film, or are you doing this? Is it seen quite badly to you in comparison to Waltz and Gromit? I don't know. I don't know what it is about it because 
everything you're saying, you know, I'm kind of completely agreeing with you, but um, I don't know, maybe it's just everyone in it is an idiot. That is one yeah. thing. <laughs> Even Charles Darwin, one of the most... Yeah, yes. so I don't know whether that kind of... I guess Martin Freeman's character is the kind of voice of reason and kind of, you know, sorts everything. And obviously Mr. Bobo as well. So there's a monkey yes. and, yeah. and Martin yeah. Freeman are kind of like... The monkey the, was a good... He had a lot of good sight gags, actually. He's great, yeah, yeah. He speaks in, in flashcards, yeah, which flash is always fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, it certainly wouldn't put me off wanting to see any more, but I I wouldn't... If they made another Pirates film, I probably wouldn't see it. Okay. Oh. Harsh. I know. I think... <laughs> Sorry. When Felix was talking before about his about the pirate captain not being that much of an endearing character, I could have think I think that's probably why I didn't engage with it mm-hmm. the first time I saw it in the cinema. And certainly I didn't engage with him really this the second time mm-hmm. I watched it. I was thinking I was I was concentrating on everything else that's going around the screen. I think you're right, he's a bit of an idiot. It's more than an idiot, he's, he's self obsessed and he's like, Well, you can't win it this year, so just get mm-hmm. over yourself. And they're well, all... that describes but, me but perfectly. It's, but it's yeah. good to have ambitions, to though. Why it's shouldn't a... he want to try and do it every year? Well, it's not. It's just the way he kind of. He just assumes he should win it. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. I I really enjoyed that character for that reason. I, I think everyone has a slightly unusual choice about them. And looking at this screen of pictures that we've got up, and I'd forgotten about Queen Victoria there being basically the final boss. <laughs> yeah, of the film. Yeah, <laughs> which is amazing. That was brilliant. I also I've seen lots of um, Imelda Staunton. I think is the, it the is indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, Imelda. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of uh, taglines here. I'm seeing places to pillage, people to skewer. That's fine. Very good. Laugh your booty off. That's like, you know. it's but pl- it's, it's a plunderful life gets the crown from me. I think that's really good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Only, it's 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 very British. You know, it's kind of Monty Python esque. It's very it's very. Oddman in its style there there is a, yeah i just I, just, I really don't know what it is mm. well listeners and helen if that's a problem for you for the love of god don't listen to wooden overcoats <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the scores guys tom this is our unique sto- scoring system where we have the recommendability one day, so, Helen, you'll be happy saying that that's word. That's it, yeah. <laughs> We're not sure it's really it's, a word. It's, well, I mean, it is now, surely. Language is fluid, guys. This is, this is the beauty of it. Yeah. I would give it recommendability of... Yeah, I'd say five. I guess I'm going to put five. Mm. Because I, I think that, you know, there may be caveats. Like if someone said, I'm looking for a really gory horror film or a really sort of chilling suspenseful crime thriller. This I is not the studio called Ardman. <laughs> yes, yes, there's this great studio. <laughs> They're right up your alley. But uh, anyone with a va- who said, even if they just said, can you think of a good comedy, I'd recommend this. Nice. Felix. Five. Easy. Oh. Well, there's me equivocating and there you are just hitting that <laughs> so, Yeah, five. obviously. Smashing out Someone said to me, yeah. should I watch Pirates? Be like, yeah, it's great. Okay. You'll yeah, have a lovely a time. time. Fair enough, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Alan. I'm, I'm going to give it a four. There's no reason why, you know, if you're eight and you haven't seen this, you should not see it. Or if, you know, you like any of the other Ardman films, you should not see this. Just because it didn't really, you know, connect with me. You know, there's a lot of things to enjoy. So, yeah, four. I'm going to give it a 4.8. Oh. <laughs> and that's only because... How is it dropping that point to? Just because I, I do prefer Waltz and Gromit. Yeah, so, well. much, so much more. But this is awesome. He likes, but, he likes uh, decimals. Yeah, mm. I like putting... Yeah. <laughs> 4.8. If it had been framed as a dream of Wallace, <laughs> if we'd started with a shot of Wallace going, oh, cheese crackers, and then <laughs> when a, like, a thought bubble comes out of his head as he's sleeping, and there's a pirate ship, and then we watch the whole film, and then at the end, he wakes up and goes, oh, what a dream. <laughs> And then the credits, would you give it a five? That's a 4.9. I think I'll give it 4.9. That's a 4.9. <laughs> There's no point in that scenario you just painted there was Gromit. So, oh, oh true. Felix. Rookie error. Rookie error. Repeat viewing score goes for Tom. I, well, I, I, I'm going to give it a four. Mm-hmm. I think it's not a film I'm going to revisit over and over again, but I certainly would like to see it again. And Felix? Four. Yep. Exactly the same. <laughs> it's nice when friends get on, isn't it? We have similar taste. What? Helen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a three. I really don't need to see it again. But, you know, there's quite a few things that I missed the first time around. And, you know, it's, it's easy to watch. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going to give it a four for the... I was surprised at how much stuff I missed the first time, considering the first time was on cinema. And I'm sure I'll happily watch it again and look out for more and more things and try to remember a lot more things I missed. So I'm mm. quite looking forward to watching it, but not, it's not going to be soon. A small screen score. Do you feel the need to watch this on there? Well, it would have been, as with any stop motion, the amount of detail in it is so fantastic. Mm. It would have been great to see it on the big screen. But that said, we watched it on a, a mid-sized television. And on an actual television. On a television. In this day and age. I, I know. Imagine. Well, I, <laughs> on that smaller screen, no, I could certainly imagine enjoying it equally. I mean, I'm going to give it a, I'll, I'll give it a four. I mean, because it doesn't particularly lose too much. Yeah. Although it would have been lovely to see it all blown up, all big, with all those individual plasticine hairs. Felix, I don't know. I find this a really difficult one to judge. I enjoyed it very much. We saw it on a small screen. I'm going to give it four and a half because I suppose it would have been funner in bigger. But I, I, I did <laughs> funner take, in bigger. Funner in bigger. <laughs> That's what I take away from most of life. That's your name in Czech, isn't it? It is, yeah. Old funner and bigger trench. Yes. I can give it a four. I mean, I saw it at the cinema. You know, it is nice to see things like that in the cinema, you know, just really see the detail. Uh, but, you know, this is, com- you know, Christmas holidays is probably going to be coming up and, yeah. you know, get the family round, get, you know, grandma, uncle, oh, kids. such a Christmas film. Oh, on, <laughs> you know, hook up the Netflix to the TV unless you're lucky to have a... Uh, your streaming services all in one place and yeah you know it, it's it's great it's great for this scenario you're too full you started drinking at breakfast you just want to have a sit down eat peanuts and even though you shouldn't have anything more to eat and you want to sort of slightly doze away and you wake up a bit and then you're in the middle of the film and you fall back to sleep and you just don't drift in and out of it christmas day afternoon exactly what you want <laughs> it's a big that christmas was... burp that was... <laughs> the modern day cure for indigestion i think i fell yes. asleep watching this film i'd come up I'd come up, I'd wake up wanting ham. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. So Christmas Day, perfect. Yeah, true. Ham and Christmas. Mm. Yeah. Small screen, I'll give it a four as well. I think I'm... Is that like a thing? A... Ham at Christmas? So a Christmas yeah, ham. Christmas yes, ham. you can have a Christmas ham. Not in place of a turkey, but as a side dish. Yeah, a, Unless you're yeah, kosher. An addition, yeah. yeah. We've never had a Christmas ham. Me neither. But We're people do. All the way. People have, do. Have you had a Christmas ham? Felix, I, I swear to you, it's a thing. Is it? I promise you. Ham. Listeners, write in. Felix is at <laughs> Felix Trench on Twitter. If you've ever heard of the concept of a Christmas ham, tweet him now. Whatever you're doing, stop it and tweet Felix that you've heard of a Christmas ham. Christmas like, like a like gammon. A beautiful yes, a beautiful <laughs> glazed ham with a pineapple. What? It's pineapple on the top. Yeah, a what? ring of pineapple on the top and all the trimmings on the side. What a ham trimming. Christmas ham. <laughs> no, what? A, yeah, but. What 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 are tra- what? the same carrots and you stuffing and things and you just have it all. You so you have a second portion of trimmings next to the trimmings for the turkey and you've got this. Oh, ham. you no, you, you have it in the evening and so you like you know when you're not quite ready to have the the full meal again you'll cook mm. the ham and you'll maybe have it cold with some pickles and some cheeses and some Ooh, crackers. I suppose and you could like yeah that. that would make sense yeah. yes I mean, but also it sounds lovely oh, at any time in the festive period so you know Christmas Eve until sort of New Year's you you could have the ham because you've cooked it. Cooked yes it. yes all the ham. But it, you, you would just have your turkey dinner. You'd, imagine the Christmas turkey. I now remove the turkey. <laughs> put the ham in there. Yeah, I mean, I understand the picture. There's some, like, lines coming off it, like in a cartoon, to suggest it smells nice. <laughs> I feel as though I've said too much. <laughs> this Christmas is, ham. Guys, this has blown my brain. Engagement school. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Oh, five. I couldn't have been more ready for the next joke or the next image. I was just, it's, it's just enjoyment yeah. for me. Still Felix. thinking about ham. I am. Yeah. Let's give it one ham Christmas, Christmas ham. Christmas ham. Though. Christmas ham. Yeah, sure. It's just like Christmas hamper, but with the PER taken off at the end. He's not going to get I... it. We, <laughs> we tried everything. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, the principle is sound. Okay. It's, I just, Christmas right, listen, ham. Sorry, listen. Five. <laughs> <laughs> For Christmas ham or for Pirates in an Adventure with Scientists? Oh, God, I'm not, having a, I'm not engaged in a Christmas ham. All yeah, right, fair enough. I'm never One. engaging in that nonsense. Right. Can we start another table for Christmas ham? <laughs> Three. Three. Just weren't that engaged. No. I mean, I, I, it's the kind of film that if it was on TV, I could kind of put on in the middle and not really care, you know, if I watch the end. And it's, it's fun, but it's not really you know, thought provoking or <laughs> in you know, gets me there. you know, mm. three. It's just yeah. And what for Christmas ham engagement? 
Oh, five. Yeah, five. Uh, stark disagreement here across the table. <laughs> Have you had Christmas ham? I've, I've, a friend has cooked a ham before. For How Christmas. was it? Yeah, it was great. What did you have with it? Well, they, we had it as a Christmas Eve party. So we had the party on Christmas Eve and they cooked a ham and the rest of it she took to her family and they had it with the Christmas meal, but we just kind of had it with, you know. Like piccalilli? Yeah. I like a piccalilli. Christmas He's piccalilli. on board. He's on board. <laughs> I like we have a Christmas piccalilli. You know, it lasts for a few days so you can have some like ham sandwiches and mm. no, I've, I've, I've had it. I've come across ham. Yeah. But at Christmas. <laughs> Felix, you're now being... Willfully obstructed, <laughs> and I like, won't abide it. It's like ham on any other day, but this day on Christmas. On Christmas yes, day. yes. Four engagement. I think I had to check. I don't know. I was checking stuff on IMDb because I couldn't. I couldn't place Hugh Hugh Grant, and I don't. It just pissed me off. But <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Yeah, who is this it, voice? I couldn't yeah. remember. It was also a bit like, is it Hugh Laurie? And then I thought, no, because he's an Arthur Christmas. Ah, uh, uh, I never saw Christmas. that. Christmas. Different podcast possibly, but it is on Netflix, and you should definitely, definitely, definitely watch it. Oh, really? It. Is it good? It's yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, listeners, tune in to find out whether <laughs> someone or please, watch Arthur Christmas. someone please pick Arthur Christmas. Yeah. Yes. No hints there. This is a call out to all of the future podcasters that we have on here. I've got a fact about Hugh Grant. Okay. If you take the name Hugh Grant and you replace the R with an E, and then just kind of read it like it looks, it makes huge ant. <coughs> True. I don't think what that about counts. The H? A... What about the H, second H, and Hugh? You have to take the second H. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count as a fact. <laughs> it does. So if you take the word Christmas and replace it with the word ham, ham. Then... <laughs> then that's just a ham ham. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> 25th of December is ham day. Listen, we're down a rabbit hole here, and I don't... We need another episode to cover this. So we get... Okay, our overall score here, we, we get... 4.2. 4.2. It's strong, very respectable. Strong, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. aware, guys. You have to head off to, to Paris. So I have to head off to Paris. So we need to get... Yeah, who are you? Just, in, you know, so we know who doesn't know about Christmas ham. <laughs> and where can we find you so we can tell you about Christmas ham? Felix Drench. I'm at Felix Drench on Twitter. Please do not tweet me about Christmas ham. But maybe, maybe tweet me your Christmas traditions, your... Crazy, crazy Christmas traditions. <laughs> Judeo-Christian-centric Felix Trench there. I'm Tom Crowley. Uh, you can find me at Crowley, three E's and a Y. Just search Tom Crowley and, and find that one. It's I'm, <laughs> Look, Tom Crowley was taken and I was just trying to be imaginative. And it, it's it's my, you know, I mean, I've got other different users. It's so annoying. Do you anyway, feel it's sorry. backfired? At, sorry? Do you feel it's backfired on you? I don't think so. It's just when I have to say it out loud. If I write it down, it's fine. But on the podcast, this is the problem. Tom Crowley, Crowley, three E's and a Y. Is it quite fun? Writing the three E's. It is, yeah, 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 it is. I mean, that's the good thing of it. Listen, <laughs> go on Twitter and search Crowley, C-R-O-W-L-E-E-E-Y. It, you'll have all the fun that I have every time I log in. <laughs> and fi- uh, also find Overcoats Wooden. Yeah, We should mention oh, that. At, at Overcoats Wooden. At on Overcoats Wooden, yeah. because Wooden Overcoats is a band who no longer really operate. Oh, yeah, we, we can't get their Twitter. At Wooden Overcoats. Yeah. Maybe Overcoats we should Wooden. do a hostile takeover. We will. Or woodenovercoats.com. And also you can look on all the podcast apps to find Wooden Overcoats, the funereal podcast sitcom. Yeah. Thank you very much, Fantastic. guys. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. From the Wooden Overcoats, we thank you, Felix and Tom, for being awesome guests. Check out their awesome podcast as well. Even more awesomeness from GL Productions, who are responsible for making this podcast sound more professional than it actually is. And thank you for more awesomeness from the awesome sounds of the mighty people. We are awesome. Leave us an awesome review. You can find us on iTunes. Subscribe now. Do it now. And we are on Twitter at FlixWatcherPod all details, full details, everything you need to know about us on the website flixwatcher.tv.